you've already heard really some of the issues. There are certain areas of improvement that we all need to make. So first of all, if I can summarize what really everybody agreed on, we have to practice integrated and systems thinking. The complexity that Anthony has just showed you and the complexity of taking the science that the scientists are doing, working together with the engineers, working together with government departments, how do we blend in the thinking, the knowledge, and always going forward, thinking about the future. This kind of systems thinking and practicing it in departments, in your own organization, as well as with your key stakeholders is very important. In order to do this really well, or better and better, in order to keep up with the sort of extreme climate, we need to, in fact, increase our climate literacy. And this is not just for the experts, because the experts work in the community. They have to work with other stakeholders, the public, the politicians, their bosses, who are not necessarily our technical people. They need money to do this, so the financiers. We need to, therefore, increase the climate literacy across our different institutions, and also our capacity to understand and act. One of the great statements that come, came out of our uh, uh, plenary session on Saturday was, just because everybody's very excited about something doesn't mean you know what to do. So it is very important for us to educate ourselves and to work with each other to have the capacity to act. Now, improving communication, especially in how we prepare for an emergency. And then when the emergency is about to happen, for example, if there's a big, great typhoon coming. Hong Kong is pretty good because we've had to deal with typhoon year after year. But with Mangut, we realized that there are still some gaps. So it's about continuous learning. In fact, I think in the government, after Hato, there was a lot of intense discussion about what to do next. And with Mangut, I think the defense in Hong Kong was quite good, but even there, we noticed that there are some new lessons we need to learn. So communicating, improving that communication, bringing more people into that is very important. And there is one issue we really want to highlight, and that is de-risking. In a sense that when people need, well, I think I don't need to tell you, you're all at management level. Taking decisions sometimes to do something new or to do something different, it's kind of risky. How can we develop a kind of culture of learning, but de-risking the political risk? And when I say political risk, I don't just mean uh, uh, in the legislative council where people complain, but even within an institution, in your department, in your company, in your, you know, wh whatever institution you're working in, how can we de-risk that sense of maybe we don't want to change? Because when we are facing some new risk, some of these climate risks, we hardly understand fully. So it's very important for us to develop a kind of less blame culture where we can co-learn together because we don't know everything. And when some severe e event happens, it could be extremely horrifying. Uh, so how do we build that culture? So these were the cross-cutting issues that everybody talked about. So you know, this is a summary. How do we talk to each other? Better deliberation. Before we can make decisions, we need to deliberate. We need to have the right facts. We need to understand what the risks are. We need to understand what's the level of risk we can accept as an organization, as a community. These are all really quite complex issues. And as a society, we need to discuss them. Resilience. Again, we're talking about the resilience of many different systems. We wanted to highlight especially areas that are really important to all of us the critical infrastructure for electricity, 
for our gas, for our water supplies, for our food. These are all very critical issues. How well are the resilient system? So these are things we need to talk about over time. Oh, the words, there we go. Um, does anybody recognize what this picture is about, especially that one on top? Well, you know it's about a bus. That is a branch coming through the bus. So one of the issues that we talked about a lot after Manglet is the amount of vegetation there is. But one of the things that happened was, you know, the branches that sticks out on our mountainside. That there are issues that can penetrate the windows of our buses. So one of the things that we talked about earlier already is just being more careful with certain things. Adaptation and resilience does not always mean major engineering infrastructure. We just need to understand where some of the risks are, and it doesn't cost that much to deal with them. So again, just to remind ourselves, Hong Kong is a great city. There are seven and a half million of us here, but certain of the things that could be presented by climate change affects not just us, but our entire region. The risk can be national even. So again, if we start to think a little bit more about the extensiveness of climate risk, it's different from some other kinds of risk, but it can exacerbate other types of risk. So we also talked a little bit uh, about having these kinds of discussions. It could be top down, but it could also be bottom up. It isn't all about government doing everything. The response from the community, from other groups is very important, and we saw this. So people talked about the kind of new discussions that people need to have, more multi-agency collaboration within the government, government and discussion with the major infrastructure stakeholders. The stakeholders themselves could be having new conversations with each other. Obviously, we need to bring our legislature and our local uh, councillors on site so they understand what could be happening. The education sector, including the universities, how can we be a part of that discussion? Because in our institution, there is a lot of rich data and knowledge. The built environment professionals. We are a city of buildings and infrastructure. That particular profession, extraordinarily important. We have many, many companies here that deals with infrastructure uh, all along the chain, from property developers to architects to planners to landscape architects to building managers and so on, electricians, or, you know, the, all the people that are necessary to keep this uh, city running. How can they also have more extensive discussion? And finance and insurance, things cost money. Insurance, how do we understand how that might go forward in the future? We already briefly touched on philanthropy and the community sector, the NGOs. One point that we do wanna press is, climate change requires different professions to actually have more knowledge, we need to retool our, uh, ourselves that as we think about the qualifications for the different professions, perhaps climate change is something we all need to know better. What kind of platforms? How are we going to talk about these areas? Where do we talk about them? There was one sense coming through from everybody in the community to really talk about, can we have new institutions to talk? But as we reflected on this after the conference, we realized that actually there are many existing bodies already in Hong Kong. How can we use these existing bodies to have these conversations that everybody wants? And you know, here's just a few examples. Council of Sustainable Development, this is a government body. We have the University Government and Industry Consortium 
of sustainable urban development. But this is not working very well right now, but it could be revived. It could be re-energized so that we can have these cross-sector discussions. We have many professional bodies, Institute of Engineers, Institute of Planners, of Architects, Green Building Council. We have many of these bodies, and many of you are here today. How can we use these bodies to increase our climate literacy? We have the Hong Kong Foundation Exchange, which is a body, memberships are the philanthropic foundations. How can we get them also engaged in thinking about philanthropy, how philanthropy can help to stimulate the early opportunities for doing certain things in the community? We have the Hong Kong Green Finance Association, a new body, again there, how can the financial sector be a part of this discussion? We have the Hong Kong Quality Assurance Agency that has developed standardization, certification of green bonds. Can they also be asked to think about how to certify other types of green new products? So these are some of the things that we discussed. So perhaps I'll just stop here and uh, invite Jim McGuire